How you doing folks? Welcome back to Irish and Scottish Fishing and Fly Tying. So today I'm just going to show you how to tie up a, a very popular salmon pattern, quite a famous salmon pattern. It's the uh, Monroe Killer. Now uh, I think the origins of this fly is from a place called Avala in Scotland, so I'm, I'm led to believe. And they have got a fantastic, fantastic association water. That you can get a day ticket and you can fish fish part of the spay, scrap bit of water. But for purposes of this, I'm just going to show you how to tie up a Monroe Killer, how I tie my version of a Monroe Killer up. So I'll just get into it, I'll get rid of that. Put that over there. So start things off, folks, I'm tying this on a B280, size 10 double. Again, you can tie this up to size 6 if you want. All depends what you what you're looking for, but I'm tying this on a size ten for me anyway. Now, just start things off. Come in with your thread, and I'm using black uni thread and needle. Just start off with a nice wee bit of layer of thread. Get the layer to catch in your tag. Leave that there. For my tag on this, I'm using vineyard French wire and gold. So I'm just going to come in with that. I'm going to catch this into the top of the hook. Just catch that into the top of the hook and then run it down. Don't worry too much about touch and turns yet. Bring it down to about there. And I'll just bring it back up. And then you want to start to form your tag. And when I'm using this fine stuff, I like using a, I like doing a five turn tag. There's one, two, three, four, five. And what you want to do then is bring it up the middle of the hook. Hold it in that position and then I like to come in. I like to come in and just force the tag just to seat it in because it sometimes slips. What you want to do then? So bring a couple of turns up to the top of the hook, and then three or four tight turns. Get rid of your, and then get your tag. Bring it back down to the middle of the hook, and then come down with tight turns right down to the bottom of the hook. Like that, and all you want to do then is just move your tag out of the way until you're ready to rib it as well. So for the tail on this pattern, it is an orange tail, just cock hackle, and I'm using a hot orange in a vineyard short cock hackle. So all I'm going to do, I've already got a fibre already here, ready for it. I'm just going to grab probably about this portion for the tail. Gotta grab quite a lot of it. I'm just gonna start to work it in my hands so I'm happy with it. And then come and catch it in. I'll put two light turns in to start. Once I'm happy with the position of the tail, which I am, I'll just start to lock off onto it. I'll run the thread up the hook then. And don't worry too much if there's a couple of these fibres are coming off. Or don't worry, uh, don't worry at all because, as I say, if you just want a little bit of the orange, you just want to make sure it's at the top of the top of the uh, hook. So all you want to do now is just start to build up the up the body. Don't worry about too much of top of touch and turns. You have to, you see, all you want to do is a nice even body. Just to get rid of a little bit of the orange. Because say I'm going to be coming up this with a floss, black floss. So I'm just gradually building the body up nicely. Yeah, you don't have to be too perfect with it. There we go. So before I catch in my floss, 
I'm going to come in with my rub and my rub for this you know the original's oval tinsel but I'm using gold holographic and a medium it's just a little bit of a modern variation to the fly before I catch it I'll just roll my thread back down to the bottom of the hook and then I'll catch this in catch this in right down to where the tail is leave that in my vice stand and then I'm going to come in then with my uh, black floss I've already cut a wee bit off so I can come up with it on the body for this I just double it over just so it's like in this position and then what I do is I catch it in at the bottom of the hook and come up with the thread right up to the top and holding the two pieces you want to come up with the body taking your time as well but this floss will give you a nice nice shiny body rather than doing it with the just having a standard thread body I'm just building this up so you have let go a bit there I'm going to try and keep it going not happy with it so I'm going to come back let go of it a wee spin and I'm going to carry on with my turns just coming up the hook and once I'm up, up here at the top of the hook I'm going to like I do all my flies two turns over and then a couple of turns back over come in with my scissors I'm going to cut this off. Now, same with this pattern. The original pattern's tied with a oval tinsel, gold oval tinsel, but I like the colours with the holographic. So I'm just going to come up and rub this. I keep maintaining tension and rubbing it. And the only difference between the original is I'm then going to follow the, the holographic rib up with my gold wire just to give it a little bit more security. I'm probably going to get about four turns out of that on a size 10. And all I'm going to do is just lock it off again. Two turns over. And then pulling back. Making sure I've kept it tight. Another two turns over. Then I'm going to come in and snip this off. That's a snip. And then with a tag of tight in at the start. I'm then going to come up then. Follow that rib up. Along the gold holographic should follow it up nicely so I'm, I'm literally laying the gold wire over the middle of the holographic just to give it a bit more security you don't need to do it but as I say I just like to do it for a bit more security like I like fishing this pattern in a size 10 but I know I was saying earlier you can tie it whenever size you want it is quite a simple pattern to tie so just helicopter that gold wire off and then all you want to do now is just Start to tidy it up and you want to make your indication of where you're going to start to tie in your throat, your throats. So the throat of this is tied with uh, orange hot cock hackle and blue, blue guinea foil over the top of the orange. So I know in the pattern that I had and in the thumbnail, I've, I've tied the orange, well the blue, in quite sparse. For this one I'm going to, for this pattern, or for this one I'm going to put a bit more fibres into it. So we can, you can see it a bit better. So all I'm doing is grabbing a little bit of my orange cock hackle. And then I'm going to grab about that of my guinea fowl. And then I'm going to lay the guinea fowl over the top of the orange cock hackle. Change position of hands. So the blue's on the bottom, the guinea fowl's on the bottom. I'm going to catch it in. Two loose, a loose turn up. I'm not happy with the way that's set. So I'm going to bring that back off. It's a bit crooked. 
let's turn back up again. That's good. Tighten down. Come up to the front of the hook. I then rotate it round. Check the position. And come in with a couple of turns at the front. All that does is just holds it up in a good position that you can snip it. So I'm going to come in there and snip. Being gentle, making sure not to pull. Because you will. You can pull it out of alignment. And when the, when the fly's in this position, just give it another wee shape. And a couple of tight turns in. Just to lock that in. There we go. That's your fruit tackle in, in the nice central position. A couple of tight turns now just to build it up. And then we're going to come in with a wing. So the wing of this, you can... You can do the wing in, uh, well, if you want, you can do bucktail, black bucktail over yellow, but I'm using a dyed yellow squirrel tail. So I'll grab about, as you can see, I'll grab about this amount, this amount here. And I'll start to pull all the fibres. So I'm pulling all of those fibres out. Rough in a rough position. And the size of the wing, you're going to want it just over the tail. So to about that position, but I'm still going to cut off extra if I want to tie it in, because I'm going to tie it in. So when you tie this in, make sure you're up, up, it, up further down the hook a bit. A couple of light turns first, pull it up to the top of the hook, and then what you want to do then is pull it, pull it into the position of how long you want the how long you want the tail. Yeah, that's about right. Now you want to come in with your tight turns. Again, making sure you're pulling, make sure it's on the top of the hook. Then come in with your scissors, pull the excess, not too much. Might need another couple of tight turns. Oh. Little diagonal cut. And before you lock this down, because this is squirrel tail, it is a slippery material. So to get it all right, you want to be using glue when you lock it in. So I'm using just super glue for this. Come in with your super glue. And all I'm going to do. Run the super glue down the hook, run the super glue down the fret. I'm going to tie this in as I lock it in through the front. There you go, there's plenty of super glue on there now. I'm then going to pinch the wing, going to bring the fret through the squirrel tail fiber so it catches each one in by bit by bit. Now, if you don't do this, this has got a habit of undoing. So now I'm gonna just build up my build up my head on this fly. Gradually just building it up. So this aero, this aero material is quite good. You can build yourself quite a nice wee head. There we go. Get rid of some of them loose fibres. Coming into your whip finish. Four turn whip finish twice. So one, two, three, four. Give that a courtesy pull. Then come in again. One, two, three. Oh, come in and snip that. Then before you come in and finish off your head, I like to shape the wing before everything dries off. So all I'm going to do is give that wing a little pull. And then I'll moisten it. Come in and moisten it again. Just 
And then excess fibers, I'm just going to get rid of them. You don't have to, like, it's, like, it's just for me because it's annoying me. There we go. And then to finish off my head, all I'm going to do is come in with a bit of super glue. Bit of super glue, run it round the head, and then I'm going to finish it off with vineyards. And you have to be timing's critical with this. Because if you don't get the vineyards on it, vineyards fine head cement, what happens is it gets it makes the head go white. So all I'm doing is just running this round to this fight round round the head, making sure that the whole head's covered. Now the head's a bit big on this, but I've gone a bit too far. But don't worry about it, it'll still fish. I'm then gonna come in and the vineyard's fine head cement. Just allowing it to dry a little bit. And then I'm gonna come in and put a nice little layer on on of vineyard's fine head cement on it as well. This will stop when the glue dries, it'll stop you getting the white head. Go in, put this on my drying stand and let it dry and I will put I will put another three or four coats of vineyard, Vineyard's Fine Head Cement. So folks, that's the fly finish. That's my version of a Monroe Killer. Very easy pattern to tie in, as I say. I like tying them on a size 10. I think they're very good good fly. You know, when you look into the history of these flies, they, they do say that it uh, should be a pattern fished in the autumn. Or the summer but you know you can fish it all year round because of the black and yellows you know and with the orange as well i like the, the black and orange pattern black and yellows you know very popular pattern now yeah if you like my like this fly please subscribe and i uh, like me like me posts uh if you didn't know what the what fibers i was using materials please check out the description beneath and uh, if you get a chance over the next couple of weeks, I'm going to continue tying flies, and then when we can get out on the water, I will be putting videos up where I've actually been using these patterns. Uh, so, thanks for watching, folks, and I'll see you at the next fly.